Hey everyone, this is Brandon Allen with Trichome Institute and in this video I'm going to be talking about decarboxylation and how important this process is for edibles and other orally consumed cannabis products. For this topic we're going to focus primarily on THC and CBD. Now when we think about the most common cannabinoids like THC and CBD these cannabinoids don't actually occur in the plant at significant levels. Instead, the compounds THCA and CBDA are what the raw plant primarily consists of. The A at the end stands for acid, and the best way to think about these cannabinoids like THCA and CBDA would be in their raw state. When these cannabinoids are exposed to heat or are oxidized over a period of time, they go through a process called decarboxylation. Without getting super technical, this process essentially changes the shape of the cannabinoids and removes the carboxyl group, or what makes their name have an acid at the end, and transforms them into their neutral form. Now, although the majority of CBD or THC in raw cannabis flower is going to be in their acid form, decarboxylation can still happen at room temperature over longer periods of time as well. This is why when you look at a cannabis lab test, you will see both THCA and THC or CBDA and CBD, and then their total THC or total CBD. Whenever you're determining the sum of THCA and THC as an example, you can't just add the two together. If you have 100 milligrams of pure THCA and decarboxylate it, you'll then be left with approximately 87 milligrams of THC because the carboxyl group falls off, essentially making the cannabinoid lose molecular weight. This happens with all acid cannabinoids, but the amount of weight they lose will vary from cannabinoid to cannabinoid. Decarboxylation is really important when we're consuming cannabinoids because the neutral forms of say THC and CBD are much more potent than their acid forms. Now, this doesn't mean that there isn't a time and a place for THCA or CBDA, but I assure you that 10 milligrams of THCA isn't going to be anywhere close to as potent as 10 milligrams of THC. Without decarboxylating THCA before ingesting it, you're not ever going to feel high. In order for your liver to create 11 hydroxy THC, which is that edible high, you need THC, not THCA. If you were to simply ingest THCA, there may be medicinal benefits if you have the right dose, but it's not going to make you feel high whatsoever. Now, although THCA and CBDA can decarboxylate at room temperature over a longer period of time, heat is ultimately what's needed to transform these cannabinoids into their neutral forms. In 2016, researchers experimented with isolated cannabinoids to determine the best temperature and time for decarboxylation, and they determined that under vacuum without any light exposure to prevent oxidation or degradation, that the best temperature for THCA was 230 degrees Fahrenheit for 40 minutes, and for CBDA, it was 266 degrees Fahrenheit for 40 minutes as well. So this is something that everyone needs to keep in mind when you're making edibles at home with either hemp or a marijuana flower. In order to get the most out of your dominant cannabinoid, you need to make sure you're working with the proper temperatures so you're getting the most potent neutral cannabinoids as possible. Hope you all enjoyed this video on decarboxylation. I appreciate your time. If you'd like to learn more about the ins and outs of cannabis, be sure to check out trichominstitute.com and all of our online courses, which will help you weed better.